Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We're here with Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Margot Black, running for Portland City Commissioner, position two. Welcome, Margot. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Glad you could come. Let's start. Tell us about yourself, please, and why you're running for this office. What unique characteristics you bring. So my name is Margot Black, and I am running for Portland City Council seat number two. I am a single mother of three, and I became a mother when I was a 19-year-old single mother. Um, I am a, a community organizer. I co-founded Portland Tenants United in 2015. Um, I have a master's degree in math and a 15-year background teaching mathematics at the college level and doing administrative and managerial work in that role as well. Um, I am a renter. As I said, I founded Portland Tenants United. I also um, am the primary architect of Portland's renter relocation assistance ordinance that passed in 2017. Um, I serve on the Portland Rental Services Commission as a mayor appointed commissioner. Um, I assisted with the passage of FAIR, the FAIR Act, which helped uh, or helps um, protect security deposits and reduce discrimination in the um, application and screening part of the rental process. And I also um, was a, a, a big part of getting the statewide <clears throat> Um, rent control passed in 2019 and the end to no cause evictions. Um, I'm running because I uh, housing and homelessness continues to be one of the number one issues facing Portlanders today. Um, I, from, as, a, as an in the trenches tenants rights organizer who works as a renter with renters, I see how um, housing insecurity touches every single issue that Portlanders care about, whether they're renters or not. Um, and I also um, see how hard it is for those voices and needs to be represented um, in politics. And, um, and I want to uh, change that by running for council and representing those voices and fighting for those needs. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. The COVID-19 pandemic and the devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout from this, including reduction in city revenue? I think that we are just really beginning to start to understand the magnitude and scope of the essentially global economy coming to a standstill without really being prepared for it. Um, and we are seeing an impact across uh, really every corner of, of life. Um, I think that we're, we're going to have to see, I mean, I think on the other side of this, we're gonna have a completely rebuilt economic system. Um, and I think it's incredibly important uh, right now to really be presenting visions for the future of what that economic system should look like. Um, in particular, it shouldn't be one where our basic human needs are essentially at the whim of the market. Um, and so I think that is gonna mean uh, Medicare for all, uh, massive investment in, in public housing, massive investment if not an entitlement program for housing vouchers so that everybody who needs a place to live gets a place to live and doesn't have to pay more than they can afford for it. Um, and in order to accomplish this, and, and obviously the enormous loss of revenue that is gonna accompany the economic fallout, uh, we're going to have to raise revenue through taxing the highest income earners and the wealthy um, uh, in the way that FDR did after the uh, Great Depression and with the New Deal in order to get us out. And we're gonna have to do that um, we're gonna have to do that now, we're gonna have to do it soon, as well as use any um, regulatory processes such as say lifting the ban on rent control or the city enacting its own version of rent control under emergency conditions, using um, its emergency declaration powers to commandeer hotels and other um, uses, or other properties in order to um, just meet everybody's needs and get us stabilized uh, through this storm while we start to present a vision for rebuilding. Thank you. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? <clears throat> the bureaus that I'm best suited for are those that have to do with how and where the city houses and shelters its residents and how it gives Portlanders a voice in decisions that impact them. So that would be the Housing Bureau, Bureau of Development Services, Bureau of Planning and Sustainability, 
Office of Equity and Human Rights and Office of Civic Life would be bureaus I'd be very eager to oversee. However, uh, Portlanders are electing a Portland City Commissioner to represent their voices and fight for their needs across all issues in bureaus. They aren't filling out their ballots to choose who will manage the Water or Fire Bureau. So I want to take this time to say we really do um, need to change this dysfunctional form of city government during the charter review process next year. Um, I'm absolutely committed to, um, to changing the way we elect our city commissioners and to installing a city manager who will run bureaus so that elected leaders can do the work that they were elected to do. Whatever bureaus I get, I will uh, fight for the needs of working people and parents um, no matter what. Thank you. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police and community relations, use of deadly force, officer accountability? Uh, well, public distrust for our police force um, has never been higher. I've lived in Portland for over 20 years, and I have seen um, just a uh, new cycle after new cycle of uh, use of lethal force and other instances of uh, police uh, violence or corruption, and it it seems like the result is always the same. There's a grand jury convened in secret. Um, there are no charges. Uh, any um, other types of accountability or oversight um, always finds um, an officer uh, it, it is in the right. The only exception being John Frashauer, who then um, who was fired but was then reinstated because of the police union. And that's really what this comes down to. There are a lot of um, contractual barriers in the police union contract that prevent the kind of um, accountability that we need. But definitely more can be done. Um, I mean, in addition to what work is already being done by Commissioner Hardesty in, in um, public contract negotiations, um, we need to build a new and independent new and independent accountability mechanisms. We also need to focus on prevention through tr trainings and, and culture changes. Um, we have to really recognize that, sure, if there are good apples and bad apples, if bad apples are never held accountable and good apples know that see something, say something will only hurt them uh, later, then obviously we're going to have bad apples. So uh, I can say more, but I'll be done now. Your last question, fairly briefly. The city's park system faces serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park system? Well, even before COVID-19, taxing the rich was on my platform. And, and for uh, the park uh, layoffs and community center closer, closings that happened in last year's budget cycle is the primary reason. We need to snap out of this austerity mindset. The revenue is there. We just need to make a more serious commitment to funding essential public services, which includes parks and community services. We need to tax high income earners and corporations who are enjoying the riches of the city without paying their fair share to maintain them. Um, I know that uh, it seems like we do a lot of property taxing and bonding, but I'm talking about um, income taxes on our highest earners. You know, we all uh, know that hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer um, and face masks is, is not something we should be doing right now. We also should be hoarding money and it's time to return back to our New Deal era um, economic thought and raise marginal tax rates in order to fund public services, not cut them. Thank you, Margo. This has been the Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn more about the candidates and ballot measures on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.